Are you wondering if you should splash out for DDR5 on a new 12600K over just keeping your old DDR4? Well, me too. So let's test just that and let's jump straight in, starting with the gaming results. Now to make it clear, I'm testing the RTX 3060 as that's what the, the, the most reasonable GPU I have on hand right now and at 1080p with what I would call realistic settings. For competitive games like CSGO, that means low. For everything else, that's generally medium or maybe high. As for the RAM, I'm using the uh, Kingston Fury Beast uh, DDR5 5600CL40 with this ASUS Z690 Strix E. And for the DDR4 side, I'm using a B660 Plus Wi Fi D4 and this Lexar Ares DDR4 4000CL16. Starting with CSGO, then, it seems like DDR4 has a slight edge here. Now, it's not that much and certainly not something you would notice, although the extra 20 FPS in the 1% lows might have more hope of actually reaching your eyeballs. My only guess here is that the lower latency of the DDR4 RAM is more beneficial than the higher speed of the newer DDR5. Moving on to Cyberpunk, that is the complete reverse. The DDR5 pushed over 10 FPS more performance on average and around 7 FPS more in the 1% lows. That's a pretty significant win for the newer RAM. Shadow of the Tomb Raider sees the DDR4 result just about edge out the DDR5 run, but barely. I'd call these functionally the same, especially since the 1% lows are under 1 FPS apart. That isn't exactly what you would call a noticeable difference for sure. Microsoft Flight is an interesting one, as both results averaged pretty much identical results, identical performance, but the DDR4 run offered 8 FPS more in the 1% lows, meaning it should be a smoother playing experience. Finally, in Fortnite, the difference is pretty negligible, with the DDR5 results coming out ever so slightly ahead, both in average and 1% low results. There really isn't much in it though, at least with this sort of chip, this graphics card, the settings and resolution. As for the CPU specific tasks, in Cinebench R23 multi-threaded, DDR4 runs slightly slower than DDR5. This makes pretty good sense and is very much expected, you know, what I would expect to see here. Intel recommends DDR5 for these chips and I can see why. I guess in the multi-threaded loads, having as much throughput as possible is, is more beneficial. Although as for single thread, that's a little different. DDR5 actually ran a touch slower than the older DDR4. Not by all that much in the grand scheme of things, but slower nonetheless. I would have to assume again that in single threaded loads, the lower latency is preferable to throughput. In Blender and the BMW scene, again, the newer DDR5 is a touch faster. Just two seconds here, although in the Gooseberry scene, while the percentage remains pretty much the same, the actual time loss with DDR5 is much more significant. It takes 19 seconds longer to render the single frame. So if you're trying to render, say, a full animation with this chip, well, you would see considerably better performance overall using DDR5. As for the Adobe Suite, in Premiere, DDR5 again takes the performance crowd. It's not an insane margin, but it is a healthy leap. After Effects always offers some pretty strange results, and this is no different. The DDR4 result royally thrashes the DDR5 result by almost 30%. That is a crazy lead, and again, I can only imagine that because After Effects is a pretty memory and I guess latency intensive application, that means that it gave a, a better score uh, in the Puget Bench test. Photoshop happily returns things to a bit more normal though, with a very healthy lead for DDR5 with a little over 10% higher score. So for gaming, especially for more CPU bound titles, you might find the DDR4 is the better option if only slightly. In more GPU-bound games, you might find that the DDR5 has a slight edge, although if you look at the percentage of gained and lost between the two, DDR4 generally gains more than DDR5 does. 
For CPU specific tasks though, it's pretty clear you want the newer stuff. The performance gain isn't massive in most cases, but it would be enough to sway me, especially if I was going for a more productivity focused build. Of course, that ignores the cost and longevity arguments. If you already have some decent DDR4, the cost of an upgrade to something like this 13600K is considerably lower if you go with a DDR4 board instead. But you could also make the argument that splashing out for DDR5 now means that for the next three, four, five or more generations, you'll be able to drop in an upgrade without replacing the RAM. Personally, I would say that if you already have a good DDR4 kids that you won't be using after the upgrade, I would just stick with that. If you're, you're building from new or you haven't upgraded in so long that you only have, say, DDR3, well, then I would think, especially since the price of DDR5 has come down a lot since the 12th gen launch, I'd probably opt for that instead. On the argument of you know the longevity you can sort of drop in in the future, it is worth remembering that you're still likely going to be buying what are essentially the early kits, the lower frequency, the higher latency, and arguably possibly more expensive. Whereas in theory anyway, if you do wait a few generations before you do a, a major upgrade, uh, in theory the DDR5 might be cheaper then and potentially better, so there's that to consider as well. I think, like I said, I would generally stick with DDR4 if you already have some, but if you're buying from scratch now, then maybe DDR5 might be a good option. With that said, those are my thoughts, but I would love to hear yours in the comments down below. What do you think about the DDR4 versus the DDR5 sort of battle on this generation, and which would you pick? If you want to check out the 13600K or the RAM or boards that I'm using, I'll leave some links to those in the description down below. There'll also be plenty of other videos you can check out on the end cards when they pop up in a second. And of course, if you want to see more videos like this one, you can hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell notification icon. You can also support the channel in a load of different ways, mostly through the links in the description. There's the YouTube join button if you want to become a YouTube member and get some cool rewards for doing so. Become a patron or pick up a hoodie or t-shirt like this one if you fancy. And there's some affiliate links to places like Overclockers UK if you're buying from there. Otherwise, that's kind of it. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments down below. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next video.